It was just a week, or just two weeks ago from our last broadcast here, where Levi Zlinski took the checkered flag, and tonight he is not with us. So we will have a new winner here in the Racing to Cure Truck Series. Hello, and welcome to Sim Racing Live's coverage of the 308 Racing Racing to Cure Truck Series. I'm Justin Kolb alongside Carlos Acosta. We got good a race good here. Evening. We got a race here tonight at Chicago Land Speedway that will surely excite. We got 15 drivers here in the field tonight, and uh, Carlos, what do you think we'll be seeing here? Uh, I expect to see a lot of uh, green flag racing, hopefully, which will result in a bunch of highline racing, as well as adjusting to a very tight track. From what I'm seeing, not very few cars are spinning out. As a matter of fact, most cars that do spin out are either due to contact or from painting that wall. So again, we got 10 minutes here on the clock for these drivers, and then we're gonna have a 10 rate or a 10 minute uh, pre-race little talk or little chat, so these drivers know what they're up against tonight. You so far, the only person to have posted a time during qualifying is Nate Lackamy with a 30.241, as we have two other people. Although Nate is still leader. We, I believe we have basically all the trucks on track except for about three. So everyone's going to try and make a run early. I don't think there's really going to be a benefit to try and make a run later in qualifying like there may be uh, in the real deal. Yeah, it's just a few more minutes. I believe that it is uh, 20 minutes qualifying, although 10 minutes of that is a uh, driver's meeting. Driver's meeting. That was the word I was looking for before. Yes. Are we going to be broadcasting that? I believe so. Yes, I believe Tanner Sharp will be the leader during the driver's meeting, which will get an in-depth uh, uh, listening ear as to uh, what goes on into the three-wide racing. Meeting. Yes. After this 10-minute uh, qualifying session, we're going to talk to our in-race reporter, Michael Skinner, who I believe is going to be joining us for a second time in a row here on uh, Sim Racing Live funny how that happens but after that we're going to bring you or we're going to take a break but you're going to be able to listen in to the uh, drivers meeting that Tanner Sharp will be commanding and then we're going to take you into the race all right so it appears that there have been four cars that have not taken a time yet i don't know if you want to do a quick drive down first or you want to wait a bit more uh, i'd say we wait a little bit we're only 3 minutes in let's uh, give it another 2 minutes and see where we are from there all right, David at the Everly moment I can count around. Second. It's right along I'm with sorry, David. I cut you off there. I, I more or less cut you off. <laughs> we're just cutting off each other. Yes, this is what this broadcast is about. We're just going to have fun here. We're at live, the moment folks, I'm counting anything around, happens. Uh... Go ahead, I just cut you off again. <laughs> at the moment, where I'm looking at about maybe 10 of the 15 cars that are on the track right now. Although a bunch of them are getting off. We're going to ride along here with Tanner Sharp in that number three Chevrolet. With a Mountains of Dew scheme on today. Not sure that's yeah, the see, name that's he gave to it. Heart. Oh, tags the wall and he's around. Oh! And he's, I think his throttle hung there. That is a hard contact. Okay, ah. Hopefully he's okay. Let's ride along with Jeff's story here. He's going to make another qualifying attempt. Let's ride along. He's stuck behind the 15 of Michael Skinner at the moment, but he's going to get around him. Right 15 has a very nice Christmas piece. Uh, what's it called? Truck. I believe that is the Grinch. Yes, yes it is. If you know Michael Skinner, he totally acts like that. Right behind the seven of Jeff Story is Trevin Roby, who was our broadcaster uh, last uh, two weeks ago. He did a great job, although he did concentrate a lot on me. And uh, for certain reasons, us broadcast or our, us workers here at Sim Racing Live like to rely on each other, either in the track or in the broadcasting booth. And uh, this week, Trevin decided to uh, run the race, which Carlos actually wanted to run, but uh, they switched positions here. So you can yes. thank Carlos for. Uh, filling in that spot yeah we were actually supposed to have a completely different lineup today but uh, due to complications and uh, last minute scheduling issues it's gonna be just the two of us so yes. I hope you guys bear in with us as uh, we continue with about five minutes to go in this qualifying session yeah you weren't supposed to hear my voice today but uh, you get to hear it for another week and then I'll you be... you also weren't supposed to hear my voice today 
Yeah. I'm not sure if David's right. coming off from another run, but uh, we got about four minutes left, so let's go down the order at the moment. We got Nate Lacomany on the pole for the moment. Paul Ross is in second. Johnny Thomas third. Jess Story fourth. Tanner Sharp fifth. Percy Martin sixth. And Nick Miller seventh. Corey Lindsay is eighth. Michael Skinner is ninth. Trevin Roby is tenth. Samuel Close is eleventh. Richard Hins is twelfth. David Ever uh, Everly is thirteenth. Stephen Ketman and Nathan Young have yet to take uh, lap time, but they are fourteenth and fifteenth respectively. We got a good little battle going on back there with the 18 of Paul Ross. And, well, it was a good battle, and Nick Miller and Paul's going to pull it onto pit road. All right, since we have four minutes to kill, Justin, where do you think your favorite scheme today is so far? Well, I think I may have to go with uh, Michael Skinner's paint scheme just because it's so cute. I mean, come on, you got that little dog on the back. I believe there's another uh, Christmas theme one. I'm trying to find it. I believe that was the 08 of um, Nate Lacomney. Oh, he, he's yeah, he's loose around. on the track. And, uh, oh, whoa. Perfect time. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Gave us a little show there on two wheels. Almost flipped it. I'm assuming you you saw the same thing I did. I, I certainly back. did. That was pretty oh. cool, I have to say. <laughs> Paul's going to get uh, another you're, run You're here in here camera, and... too. I've noticed that, too. No wonder your, your angles are different than mine. Oh, what's it called? Yeah, it looks like he almost... I've never seen that before in iRacing. Never, right. not by yourself. I, is that the new build? But I gotta say, Nate's car is the best looking car today. Yeah, again, I, I'd still have to say Michael Skinner is the best for me, but... Alright, well, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna put it to the race. Whoever finishes out of the other wins the best green scheme. Yeah, let's settle it like that. Alright. So Nate Lacomney still on pole at the moment, but... Believe. So far, Steve Kepman and Nathan Young still have yet to take a lap time. I, I am, I am under the impression that Nathan Young does not like, does not like to qualify too much. So this is common for him. I'm not too sure about Steve Kepman. We've got two minutes left on the clock there, as you can see above the ticker. Paul Ross still in second. He's right now chasing down Nate Lacombe, or not chasing down, but is behind him. Which we do have a developing story that Nate Lacombe isn't feeling well. But you know what they say, a, a fast race car is a great medicine. And he just about lost it there as Paul Ross is going to go by. I think uh, he did clip the wall, but it looks like uh, he may have come out clean. And he's going to end that run. So let's let's go on board with Paul now as we got about two minutes left, actually. Two minutes now. I'm sorry. Let's see if Paul has anything. He is about just over one hundredth of a second off uh, Nate's lap time. He's going to bring it down here. Uh, no, that was actually a lot slower. This is going to screech to a halt. All right. About a minute and 20 seconds left here for these drivers. Let's ride along now with remember. Richard Hines here. Now remember, it is a minute and 20 seconds on the official time, but in three-wide racing, it isn't always exactly called at that moment. It can be called at that moment, or it can be called a few seconds afterwards. Yes, so when we see these drivers uh, start to pull off, we'll uh, ring up that car right behind the 87 of the 15 of Michael Skinner. Now I have to say, with his scheme, I don't think I'm too big of a fan of that number. I think it uh, blends into the white just a little bit too much, but other than that, I think it's a really good scheme. I noticed a, I wouldn't say a lot, but some of these guys uh, running non-trading paint schemes, which is okay, but just a little bit bland in my opinion. Because we got about 20 Give seconds Give me a left. moment, I'm having some issues right now. And uh, Michael's going to call it quits there as he attempts to get to pit road and he's going to run it through the grass. And he's going to slide it and into the pit road wall. And with that, I believe qualifying is going to be over. Oh no, he's actually going to pit. Wow. It was a perfect entry into his pit stall. And I believe cars are still on the track, but... I believe most of them are going to be pulling off here. 
No, I haven't heard anything yet. Oh. Uh, although Trevin Roby has disconnected from the server. What? It's probably going to be another developing story here. Not sure what went on with that, but he's still currently in the TeamSpeak server, so. But since we have the time, let's go uh, talk to our. Let's talk to our in race reporter in that Grinch number 15, Michael Skinner. You got a copy, man? Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Pretty good. I have to say, that was a pretty impressive uh, pit road entry there. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of practice. I don't think that's going to be the, the method to do it, but, you know, it's all in fun. Yeah, I don't think that'll work out too well on or during the race, but uh, other than that, how was the car during practice for you? I noticed a lot of guys slipping and sliding around out there. It's not too bad. It's a little tight on exit um, after the first lap. The first lap's great. You know, you have all the grip in the world, and then after that, it goes away. Should be an interesting race when the tires wear off and see where if people can move up the racetrack and see if the top line can move and I'll be quite interested in seeing that. All right. Well, uh, we'll let you get to the driver's meeting and uh, we'll talk to you just before the race starts. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you all enjoy the show and you enjoy my uh, Grinchmas truck tonight. We have a little competition going on that truck. Whoever, oh, he's gone. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to uh, step aside for a minute, and uh, we're going to take a break here. But uh, we'll let you listen in to the driver's meeting here on uh, Sim Racing Live. We'll be right back. All right. Um, I don't see, I don't see a woman in here. Anywho, welcome to tonight's uh, Racing Secure Truck Series at the Chicagoland Speedway. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about pit uh, pit stuff here. Pit exit. Please stay on the apron of the racetrack at all times until the exit of turn two. Once you enter the back stretch, you may enter the the tr the track itself uh, safely, obviously. Entering pit road, you can enter pit road any way you like it. Uh, no black flags will be cleared once you get a speeding penalty or anything like that. Uh, leaders have lane choice on a start or restart of a race. You cannot change lanes before the start-finish line at any time. Um, let's see here. Please uh, pay attention to the uh, what iRacing assigns you to, to tonight when uh, it comes to closing up the gap under a caution flag. If, uh, if you're not paying attention, it's not our fault. We shouldn't have to be clearing penalties for that. Um, let's see. I don't know. I think I covered pretty much everything. Um, if you get involved into an incident tonight, please accept it and move on. We're here for fun. This is a league race. Just here for fun, racing for fun. Uh, if you have to, please protest it on the website. That's what it's there for. Any questions? And with that, the pre or the uh, drivers' meeting is over. And uh, with this, we're going to take the time about a five-minute break here. Uh, go ahead and get yourself a drink or, or whatever you need for these. Uh, next few laps or next few hours I should say here at the Chicago Land Speedway we'll be right back
And welcome back to Sim Racing Live. Qualifying has concluded, so let's roll down the uh, results here. Nate Lacomney is on pole for, I believe, it's either the third or fourth time this season. Uh, but then we have Paul Ross in second. That's your uh, front row there. In the second row, you got Johnny Thomas and Trevin Roby. Third row, Jess Story and Michael Skinner. Fourth row, we got Tanner Sharp and Percy Martin. And uh, Carlos is going to take the rest. Yeah, sure. In the... In the next row, we have uh, Nick Miller and Corey Lindsay, followed by Samuel Close and David Everly. Richard Hins is on the inside with Steve Ketterman on the outside, Nathan Young, and Richard Lafferty, who uh, showed up in the middle of our break as the 16th and final truck. Now, however, Steven, Nathan, and Richard uh, did not take any lap times, but with the rules on uh, on this series, you don't ha you do not have to qualify. That's just for starting and uh, pit selections. And uh, with that, we're going to let the clock wind down here on qualifying and wait for them to grid. Uh, I'm not really sure how much longer we have for that, but uh, I don't think it'll be too long. Yeah, that would that would just depend on the amount of uh, people that join at the moment. If everybody joins, it'll be fast. All right, the trucks have taken the grid, so... Uh... We are. We're going to welcome in our in-race reporter again, Michael Skinner. You got a copy, man? Yeah, what's up, guys? How you guys doing in the booth? Hey, Michael. We just want to know how. Uh, what's your plan for the race and to see uh, what you're going to be looking out for the most. Well, my plan for the race is to not hit the turn two wall. Um, I think that's going to be the trouble spot tonight, just getting tight. Once the, once the tires get worn, you seem to kind of push up a little bit. So I might start moving up a lane or two just to see if you can get a better run off turn two and not scrub so much speed off. Um, but my other plan is I have to beat the other holiday truck because I heard there's a bet. So that's that's the deal I got going on tonight. How about you? What you got? What's your guys' plan in the booth? Well, we're I just just to convince that. Yeah, we're just gonna try and not cut each of, cut cut each other off as much as we can. Yeah, and but not I don't know stutter. how that's gonna be working so well because. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it didn't really work too well in qualifying, but uh, you kind of answered my next question. What do you expect? How do you expect the track to uh, kind of change as the race runs out here? Honestly, you know, I want to say that, that the groove's going to move up nicely, but you, you honestly just never know, you know, if the bottom's going to stay the fastest lane or or what. You know, it's a dynamic track for a reason, and, and I guess we'll find out when we take the when we take the green flag. All right, well, Michael, unless unless Justin has any other questions for you, Justin? No, sir. Just have a good race, and uh, we hope to talk to you at the end in Victory Circle. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much. Have a good race, and hopefully they uh, got the air condition on for you up there. All right, good luck. Rest about you. That's something I don't understand. It used to be Victory Lane. Why is it Victory Circle now? I don't know. You're going to have to ask Fox about that. I don't quite have the answer for that, but... Um... I mean, it technically is a circle when you look at it. It's not really a lane right. anymore, you know? But, All right, well, uh, Justin, any last-minute developing stories besides uh, Richard Lafferty joining in? I don't believe so, but I, uh, I'm thinking it's going to be a fairly clean race, uh, unless the track changes to a point where drivers just can't keep up anymore. But uh, pace car is rounding turns three, so uh, we're going to get ready here for the green flag. Coming out of four now. Carlos, you got anything? Nope, that's off. Take it away. All right, well, we're going to wait for that pace car to pull in. And uh, it's going to do so now. Brett Bodine's pulling in, and we're going to wait for Nate to go. And there he goes. Green flag is out here at Chicagoland. We're racing the 90 laps. He got a big All jump right, on the field. Like Nate, yeah, he got a huge run. Now, in three wide racing, you can go whenever that pace car pulls in. So that was legal, the start he made. We got a little bit of three wide back there. Well, it was three wide. I believe that was Tanner Sharp who made it that. Unless my, I'm, I'm incorrect, it appears three drivers are not uh, in the racetrack right now. Steve, Nathan, and Richard. And those would be the three trucks who didn't take time. So uh, evidently, I'm not they're sure. Just I'm not sure if they just uh, they're not here, or they're having issues, or they're just starting from pits. We oh. already have one car one lap down. That's the 87 of Richard Hins. So we're down to 12 cars on the lead lap. And uh, as quickly as Nate got that jump on the restart, Paul has already reeled him in. He is right on the bumper of that 08 truck. 
doesn't look like Nate gets a good exit off the corner, and here's Paul. Hey, we look for only two laps completed, and Paul's looking on the inside. They are side by side with Nate. Nate is on that high line though. Paul slips up just a little, but looks like he might overtake him. As Trim and Roby slips into the third, you can see that whole battle in the shot. Top four. Nick Miller hunting down Trevin as uh, Nate's basically going to surrender the lead as we have a new leader on lap three. So far, the cap from first to 11th is uh, 2.7 seconds. Uh, pardon me, uh, first to 12th, 2.9 seconds. So we have the four truck blinking off a little. Paul didn't get a good exit off turn one, or turn two. Nate's going to stick the bumper underneath and uh, look to take the position. Trevin's going to try and sneak under there as well. I don't think that's going to work out for Trevin. I believe I'm having some issues with my... Uh with my computer here as it's showing uh, Nathan and uh, everybody who qualified on the racetrack. So I'm just giving me a moment to refresh. Justin, go ahead and ban for me. Well, we got the top four We're basically battling for the lead right now. This would be the best battle on track as Nate's basically slipping away as the four truck blinks again. And I'm sorry, that wasn't Nick Miller. That was Johnny Thomas in the 80 truck. Those trucks kind of look a little bit similar. Nate's pulling away at the moment. As I believe Johnny was thinking about making it very wide, but thought better of it. So now it's a battle for second between Paul Ross, Trevin Roby, and Johnny Thomas. The four truck of Trevin looking underneath the 18 of uh, Paul. Again, it looked like Johnny was going to make it three wide, and he does down the back stretch. And I thought he was about to clip the four truck of Trevin there, but he'll slide back in. And it looks like he's going to take that position away from Paul. At least try to, and no, he's going to slip in behind. And that let everybody behind catch up. Here comes Tanner, Jess, and the 16 of Percy Martin. That seemed very, very hectic up in, uh, when they were marching back in from the apron. That, atri that apron can always be a little bit treacherous coming back up. Well, we've seen what it does in Phoenix. Yes, sir. Again, basically a battle for second, but you got about second to about 7th back there under a blanket. So we just completed lap 7 of 90. Uh, Nate Lacombe has basically pulled away from this pack. And our own Trevin Roby has slipped into 2nd. Paul Ross behind him in 3rd. Johnny Tom is up there in 4th. And Tanner Sharp in 5th trying to take it away from him. All right. So far, the only things I can tell is that uh, even though he is separating away, he's already pulled up at least two tenths this last lap. But uh, I have a feeling Nate might be might be over pushing his cart compared to what uh, another driver like Johnny Thomas might be running. I don't know how long these runs are going to last, so I wouldn't recommend running your car out or all out at the moment. We're only on lap nine of ninety right now. It looks like Trevin has pulled in on him just a tad thought so and he blinks again I don't think the gap changed much that lap but again he's got Paul Ross breathing down his neck so oh it looks like there's some contact in the back with the 80 truck 80 truck up against the wall, another car. There's some carnage in the back stretch entering turns three. Let's take a look at that. I'm not too sure what happened there. Looks like there was like, some smoke earlier. It looked like Percy Martin got into the 80. I think Johnny Mayo's hit the wall and uh, couldn't get off of it. Uh, yeah, that's got... exactly what happened. Uh, the 80 went up, hit the wall, and the 16 went in right behind them. But before that, there was some smoke earlier. I'm trying to find out who caused that smoke. Johnny Tom is still out on track, but he is losing positions left and right at the moment. He's already slipped back into ninth, but I believe that's going to update here in a minute. Yeah, he slipped back to 10th, and he's going to lose another position to the 77 of David Everly.
Yeah, it looks like he's really struggling out there. So it looks like he's going to have to either wait until the next caution or fix it under uh, the green flag stops. But uh, tough break for the 80. He was uh, basically flying. He was one of the cars that was in the top pack up there. So was Percy Martin. I'm not quite sure how much damage he sustained after that. Oh, he got worse. He is uh, definitely off the pace. Let's ride along with that. I think he... Uh, May have killed that engine, and he's into the wall again. Yeah, he's he was running around 170 miles an hour. Everybody's doing at least 10 miles an hour more. So uh, he got the worst end of that. Uh, Johnny's still a little bit more competitive at the moment, but uh, tough break for those two drivers. I'm gonna take you back up front here, with Trevor Roby. Still in second position at the moment. But now he's got Tanner Sharp breathing down his neck as Tanner got by the 18 of Paul Ross. It looks like uh, Trevin Roby is uh, going a little bit lower than Nate is. And he's uh, angling it more towards the entry of the corner as opposed to the exit. But uh, the only time will tell to see how that strategy goes with him. We're going to ride on, long with, ride on board with Trevin here. As, oh, he just about hit the ball. Had to pedal it a little bit there. I don't know if uh, that's going to give Tanner the advantage. Yes, it does. He's going to peek underneath Trevin here. Tanner looks like he's get... drifting high a little. He's pushing the floor up. And that uh, got ever so close. Oh, uh, yeah. It seemed kind of hectic. As Trevin blinks again, we saw Paul Ross on the apron there, trying to get all he can. Looks like it might be a three-truck uh, three battle soon. I'm thinking Trevin may have pedaled it again. Either that or Tanner just Tanner's gets off looking the inside. And, he's uh, there. Tre Trevin's just going to give that away to him. He knows he's faster. And that's the uh, smart decision at this point. The uh, question is, will Paul stick his nose in there? I'm thinking that Trevin is uh, pedaling it just a little bit, coming out of two. Let's ride on board with him and see here. He's full on. I think he may have just either burnt the tires out or uh, he's uh, saving him just a little bit. I gotta say, Trub's, uh, Trevin's YouTube car with his nice uh, white and red looks really nice on him. I don't believe I'm seeing that. Uh, I did refresh my trading paints, but obviously that didn't work. So, As you see, Paul is underneath him now. He got a better run through the middle, but I think he's going to have to pedal it. Ever so close to the wall. I believe this is the only battle around. Except for uh, Michael Skinner and Nick Miller, but they aren't too close. With these trucks door to door at the moment, and uh, Paul's going to get that position now. Looks like Richard Lafferty is working over Paul, oh, sorry, uh, Sandro close really well. That's the closest battle I can see of right now. Richard on the bumper of Samuel Close right now. A Chevy versus Toyota. We don't have too many Toyotas in the field right now as uh, Sam's going to pull away. Looks like he got a better run off that corner. Well, not much has changed up front. It's still Nate Lacomney leading. We're going to step away.
as you can see, green flag pit stops have begun. The 3 and the 18 are right now on pit road. Uh, we'll ride along with them, see how or what they take. Uh, 14, we are experiencing technical difficulties with our uh, broadcasting uh, software. Uh, we may not uh, have updated uh, telemetry for you guys. 97 is pitting, is what I'm hearing from the radio. Looks like Tanner's going to take two tires here. And he's off. Nick Miller also took two tires. Let's see what Richard's going to take here. As he slides, coming onto pit road. No caution, but uh, that's going to hurt him. Who slid? The 97 of Richard Laferty coming onto pit road. Uh, tough break for him. Not sure uh, when exactly pit stop or everyone will come in for green flag pit the stop. The leader here. is in pit road now. The leader is in pit road. Be the 08 of Nate Lackamy. Here he comes. As well as uh, Trevin Roby. So here comes the front runners, it would look like. Uh, Tanner Sharp, who's running second. He is known to uh, come down pit road early. Richard Laferty just took four tires, as you could see, uh, when Nate went by him. I'm assuming that Nate's going to take four. And there you go. You see Richard uh, pulling off there. Nick Miller is uh, right now the leader. He stayed out, has a two-second lead over the 43 of Sammy Close. As Nick Miller goes into pit road now, it looks like he was a bit too fast. I'm not sure if he was speeding. Nate Lacombe took four tires. We're going to see what Nick will do here. We're going to try and watch as many people on these uh, green flag pit stops. as uh, We've gone green this entire 27 laps of 90 here. I don't think you'll see too many two-tire stops here, but you never know. It appears your ticker is working fine compared to mine. Something I have noticed, though, is a lot of people are having really slow lap times, over 15 seconds, uh, oh, pardon me, over 13 seconds at most, uh, at most 15 seconds. The fastest lap time I've seen so far is Trevin Roby with a 13.9, but nobody else has been close to that lap time. As, uh, Nate is back out on track. I believe he's going to retake the lead here. It's currently his fourth, but I believe once pit cycles uh, cycles out, then he will retake the lead. Right now, your current leader is Nathan Young, who is on pit road right now. Then you have Paul Ross, who actually he's probably going to take the lead back here. He's coming out of turn two at the moment. And I believe, yes, he is the current leader. Uh, ticker may say differently, <laughs> but uh, wait until everything refreshes. Uh, yes, that is our main problem right now. The ticker is showing about seven people, and there is currently uh, 16 try, on track. Try refreshing to the simple ticker. That works fine for me. All right, so it's still showing Paul Russ as the leader with Tanner Sharp right behind him. Although Nate is now 1.3 seconds, and are has Paul and Tanner pitted yet? I don't don't believe, I believe so. Yes, they have both pitted. Tanner was the first one to come in, and I believe Paul was behind him. So Tanner may have gotten a slow stop. It would appear. It's showing me. It's showing Tanner with zero, but that could just be our, our issues with the, with the telemetry we're running today. Nate Lacombe in third. Just Story was a lap down behind him. That was the car you saw. I don't believe. Actually, no. I believe he came down pit road. Although yes. Nate is Nate is there, he is right behind the three car. I'm gonna ride along with that three car here, as you can see just how close it was. Nate uh, hit the apron there, but I don't think that hurt him at all. They are all uh, under one second from the leader. Just story was uh, on that apron for quite a while, as you saw back there, that blue and white truck. But again, he is one lap down. Basically, from, now, there's only 10 cars left on the lead lap with uh, Nathan Young being the last one. As it looked like Tanner was cars. trying to take the defensive line. I believe it would be 12 cars now. 
Yes, uh, Nathan is the last one. He is 12. Shout out to uh, Johnny Thomas in the 80. Even though he hit the wall and got a bunch of rear end damage and side damage, he is still in the lead lap. It doesn't look like he repaired any of it on pit road, but uh, that truck is still pretty fast. As it would, as it updated, he's down to 10th at the moment. But uh, our other, the other guy who got contact was the 16, who is now six laps down. Yes, he is on the track though, but he isn't. Uh, he isn't in, in any competitive position right now. Let's get the four of Trevin Roby behind him. Who's going to pull out? Trevin's been blinking quite a lot during this race. Uh, looks like some latency issues there. Trevin always has issues with blinking. Although I do believe he's going after the. the he's trying to catch up to the O1, even though he is about four seconds behind him. Billy. And when I say 01, I mean 08. Yeah. Nate uh, drives the 01 car in the uh, Beat Car Series, which you can catch tomorrow on Checkered Flag Interactive or CFI at uh, about the same time. All of us will actually be in that race. Yes, uh, w uh, all of us are in chase, so we're going to com be competing for a championship as well as a diecast of our cars. Yes, both Racing Decure and Chesapeake diecasts. Both offer prizes to the championship winner in Racing to Cure. I believe it is a koozie. I saw some smoke there. Not sure who that came off of. I believe All that right, was a so 77. Me... Yeah, Looks I've like been noticing low. a lot of smoke recently. Let's take a look here. Let's see what happened. I believe he probably touched the wall. Oh no, he got real loose. He hit the apron and just about lost it, but that was an amazing save by the 77 of David Everett. And Everwood. it was also right in front of the 12 of Nathan Young. As he's going to pull it onto pit road. I don't know if that was a planned stop or he just wanted to come get some fresh tires, but uh, he's on pit road now. And what a save. This would be his second time coming down pit road. As we go back so to while the this is going on, let me run down. Let me quickly run down to the field. In first place, we have the 18 of Paul Russ, followed by Tanner Sharp, Nate Lackamy, Trevin Roby, Nick Miller, uh, and the top five: Michael Skinner, Corey Lindsay, Samuel Close, Richard Lafferty, and Johnny Thomas run in the top ten, followed by Nathan Young, Richard Hintz, David Eberly, Jess Story, Pierre, uh, Percy Martin, and Stephen Catman, who did not take an official lap. So 16 trucks still running right now. Actually, you know, I believe it was 15. 15. My bad. Nate's going to look under the three of Tanner, and Tanner, t again, takes the defensive block. And, uh, they're actually catching the 18. It's right up there, and wow. I thought Nate was about to give the bumper to Tanner. He thought better of it. It's right this on has allowed Trevin Roby to catch up. He was over four seconds back, and now at this moment he has 3.7. Nate's going to take the look under. And it's looking like he's going to get that position. He did have a lap car in front of him, but it wasn't going to be a bother. He still looks, he goes below the apron and completes the pass. So new and second when place. I say lap car, that wasn't a lap car. That was actually the leader, Paul Russ. So new second place position here with Nate, or uh, Nate Lackamy. Took the uh, second place position away done. from him. Yeah, he's, he's about done. to. He's going after Paul. That was an incredible run he got at too. I think Paul may have had to lift just a little. And he is all over the tailgate of that 18 truck. He's gonna dive to right the, apron. the apron. Tanner Sharp is following him right behind us. He, he's also gonna make a move. He's gonna get the better line into one. I'm not sure if he's gonna get it out of two. Let's see here. Tanner all Looks over like the Paul tailgate of that 08 you. truck. What a battle here for the lead. Got three cars, which is basically what we've seen all night with multi-car battles for position. Nate's got the nose as of right now on Paul. The 18s are really tight. I do believe someone said they're spinning the 16. 16, yes. This 16 is slow is on the racetrack. Track. Going down pit road again. Let's take a look here. This While this goes on, Nate Lackamy has pulled off a longer distance, although there is still a small battle between the 18 and the 3, although it doesn't look like it's going to get uh, resolved anytime soon. 
So we apologize for those technical difficulties. We couldn't get the uh, replay there. But a new first place uh, center right now with Nate Laconi. Back to the point. He did start on pole. And uh, basically the front row hasn't changed. They've both taken back their first and, play first and second place respectively. And then you got Tanner Sharp there in third. And this just puts us with 50 laps to go, am I correct? 49 laps to go, yes. All right, as I'm quickly scanning the field, it looks like the possibly closest other battle is Nick Miller and Trevin Roby. It appears that Nick Miller went by Trevin Roby because Trevin Roby was ahead of Nick Miller and Michael Skinner. And as this battle goes on, we're going to take this time to take a break here. Uh, we got 48 laps to go, and you're not going to miss anything, because we're going to go side by side. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to Chicagoland for the three wide racing, racing to cure truck series. We have another development. Uh, Jeff Story, number seven, has uh, officially announced his retirement for tonight's event. Shame, I believe he had a fairly good truck, but um, I don't think he had the track position to show it. I believe he was having some uh, personal issues at the moment. I believe that was a word. But uh, you haven't missed anything. Uh, Nathan Young is still in the lead with a 3.5 second gap over Nick Miller. I believe that would be Nate Lacombe in first. Who did I say was first? I believe it was Nathan Young. Oh, I apologize. I meant I meant Nate Lacombe. But Nick Miller did get second. I don't know what happened to uh, Paul Ross. I believe he may have pitted, actually. I believe those two have pitted. And um, the 08 has still stayed out on the track here. Yeah, it appears, because remember, they did, uh, Pa and Tanner did both pit in really early. We go on board here with Tanner, and see is tracking down the 18 of Paul Ross. Now, with 42 laps to go, they may just have enough gas to make it to the end. I'm not too sure of a fuel run here, but, uh, currently, we've ran all green flag, or green flag laps, so, uh, uh, Johnny close. Thomas goes a lap down, so it seems like all the damage is catching up to him. I believe he just put his boss a lap down. Uh, Nate did. As you can see behind, there's Johnny Thomas. We're riding on board. Uh, Trevin Roby also went down Pier Road because he is shown eighth. At the moment, there are only three cars on the lead lap, but I believe that's due to the pit stops. It's Nate, Nate Lackamy, Nick Miller, and Nathan Young. It's both the 18 and the 3 go down on the apron. I'll tell you what, these two have been 
I think, the most aggressive cars on the racetrack tonight because uh, both of them, whenever one car went on the apron, they'd both block very defensively. Uh, Tanner, I believe, showing it the most. As both yeah, of so them are catching Nick Miller oh. and Nick goes down pit road. Well, that was kind of scary. Now, this isn't the first of the green flag pit stops, but uh, we're going to follow Nick Miller to see how many tires he takes. And you're not missing anything up at the front of the pack. Except for the fact that the 18 and 3 just went by him. Now, he's taking two so far, but if those other sides lift up, then uh, he's going to take four. And he does, so we're going to switch away there. Again, both the 18 and the 3 on the apron. Very defensive driving right now. Yeah, it's still, go, it's still just, it's still just three cars on the lead, uh, pardon me, six cars on the lead dap now. Uh, Trevor Roby got his lap back, and right now, uh, John Thomas is in the lucky dog position. In order development, we only have three cars that have, uh, DNFs. Steve Kepman, who has not taken a lap, uh, Percy Martin, who, uh, DNF'd, uh, uh, a few laps into it, and Jeff Story, who, uh, right before we got back from break, you know. And here we go. You just saw it live. The three gets by the 18, and that was the battle for second. And Tanner's going to take it. And now it looks like he's going to pull away. So now, and Nate actually pulled down pit road. So that would make Nathan Young is actually cur the current leader. I'm not quite sure how that worked out, but... Paul Russ looks like to be getting right back on the three's rear bumper, continuing where things left off, but in opposite roles. I have to say, these two have been the most entertaining trucks on the racetrack tonight. Other than that whole seven-car battle for the lead we had earlier in the uh, beginning laps. I don't recall there being seven cars, but it sure felt like that. There was a lot of excitement in the air tonight. These, uh, these truck races in the, in the beginning and middle bits of the season weren't as popular. We didn't have too many trucks going out there. But uh, now, uh, the, the revamped schedule and a bunch of uh, more fun tracks, a lot of people are joining in. And we're only expecting to get more. As you can see, the 3 and the 18 both pull by the 12. The 12 is not going to pull down pit road. Curious to see how many tires he's going to take. I don't think there's any. there's been any two-tire takers as of tonight. But again, the 3 and the 18 just went by to take 1st and 2nd. The 18 got really close. Now someone who is uh, kind of creeping in there is Trevin Roby. He already pitted, and he was a, he's ahead of Nate, Nick, and Corey. So, uh, if he is playing that gas strategy, a fuel mile strategy, you might be looking at uh, it's the 4 car, the winner. 12 of Nathan Young took two tires, and uh, here's the gap to the, uh, I believe that's actually the 97 in front of him. So there's a lap car in between, as you can see him off from the distance there. Now it appears that uh, Nate Lackamy is reeling in the, the four of Trevin Roby, and looks like it's going to be a huge battle coming up here in these next uh, few corners. He is right on the rear tailgate of the four. Both of them jump down to the bottom to uh, defend their position. Or very, very be defensive Trevin. right now. Again, it Nate. just seems like the Nate has a better run through the corner and exit than Nate does. Uh, than, <laughs> uh, than Trevor, the Trevin does. Nate's and looking Nate, in the inside. Nate carrying that second Christmas scheme. Uh, battling the 15 of Michael Skinner to see uh, who wins the Christmas Wars on trucks. Nate's going to get the better uh, run like... out of four, it looks like. Yeah. Going into one, he's going to have the preferred line, and he's going to sail right in. He's not going to clear no. him, however. Oh, looks like... Trevin's having a lot of problems here. Yep, yep, I thought it was just me. But they're still side by side as they're going to go into three like that. 
And Trevin does like, not want to give this spot up, but it looks like uh, it's going to be inevitable. Yeah, it looks like he's going to have to at this point. With 31 laps to go, that was your race for third. Nate Lacombe is going to take it. Trevin Roby is going to go back to the fourth position. Now, now Tanner and Paul Ross are still up there, but they're about they have about a six, uh, six to six and a half second lead towards Nate. And Tanner actually pulled away while we looked at the battle between Nate and Trevin, and Paul has reeled him back in. So we're going to have another exciting battle here coming up as we got 30 laps to go. And I'm predicting that the winner is going to come between one of these two unless fuel mileage prevails for someone. We'll have to see, though. I don't believe that they're going for the fuel mileage strategy. I think they're just going to go. I think they do have to come in. Just a truck length separating them. Riding behind the three of Tanner Sharp here, looking at Paul Ross. And ever Man, so close. These trucks are a glory to race. We saw Paul get a bit lower than Tanner that time. Looks like he was oh. about to pull out. Paul, Paul right is, on the tailgate. Uh, doing some uh, dirty talk to the three, trying to push him onto the limit. What was he saying there? And I quote, let's see what you're talking about, Tanner. <laughs> so some friendly rivalries going on on track right now as we just took 28 laps to go. This race winding down it was a 90-lap race. Two quarters of it complete. And looks like Paul's there. All looks over like, the tailgate uh, of that three truck. He got a great run off of four, and he's looking in the inside. And he's going to get the preferred line. Tanner's not going to battle him there. Paul had the nose, but both of them are going to slip up the track just a little bit, and Tanner's going to get that back. Tanner's saying he cannot get to the, bat the, to bottom, to the bottom very well. And that's where Paul's uh, strong point is at the moment. So they're going to ride it out, and they're going to see where, uh, what yeah, Tanner has. Go. Tanner could not get oh. to the bottom that time, and Paul's going to take that easily. From They're actually still side by side. Team. Paul's going to take it away, up. and uh, we got a new leader here. It was really interesting by Tanner. It didn't even look like he attempted to get to the bottom. He can't get to the bottom. That's what he was saying. Yeah, he was nowhere near that bottom. This looks like Tanner's, with that, is going to struggle just a bit. It uh, looks like there's a battle between 4th and 5th with Trevin and Nick. Oh, no, pardon me. That was just uh, incorrect. Trevin's still in 4th here. Tanner's in pit road. Tanner's going to pit road. And here we go. And this way be where the fuel mileage prevails. What's he going to do? Is he going to take two or is he going to take four? I'm presuming four, but let's see here. I think the real question is, when is Paul going to come down pit road? As I believe Paul's going to come in very soon. He, he was talking about how uh, he was going to do that to Tanner, what Tanner did to him, but he was hoping Tanner would go by him first. Tanner's going to take four and Paul's coming to pit road now. This will put the eight car, the zero eight car, into the lead. Now, I, Nate may try the fuel strategy route, but I don't think he's actually going to make it with twenty four laps to go. No, he may he's try a two tire now. strategy. I'm really curious to see if anyone's going to try the two tire strategy. Uh, no, they were running over over one second slower than what they normally do. He's going to take those, four. Those slow tires. And Nate Lacombe, again, going to take the lead here. Now the question is, when is he going to duck down? Well, really, when is anybody else going to duck down? Second place currently belongs to Trevin Roby, as he's got Nick Miller breathing down his neck. I called it. I was just a few laps too early. And Trevin calls it. He's going to go pit road this time by. Yeah, Nick was all over the back bumper or the back tailgate. Is there a spit on the me. apron? I heard. I heard someone said spit on the apron, but I might have been wrong. Yeah, I apologize. 
So Trevin's going to come in. Nate Lacomney still on track. With only 22 laps to go here. So what is Trevin going to do? Let's find out. He's going to take four. And I guess now it's basically the waiting game. At this very moment, there are only five cars on the lead lap. Probably four with Trevin Roby going to go a lap down very soon. And I think most of that may change when Nate uh, comes down pit road. Question is, when is he going to? He's slowing and he's going to come down now. With just 21 laps to go, the 08 ducks down to pit road. And again, I'm... I do believe he may have been speeding... Speed, uh... The limit is 50, 50, and he was going 51 when he came down, but let's see how much he slowed it down. I don't think iRacing may catch him for that, but you never know. I've heard crazier. I once said you're 10 miles an hour fast, but then I stopped you for the next timing line. Up close and personal, as Samuel Close will pull off pit road. This now puts Corey Lindsay into the lead. And Nate's going to take two tires. I was oh, curious to see. I was curious to see who would take that strategy, and Nate looks to be the only one who's going to do so. So now I'm really curious how those tires are going to hold up. So we'll see. If, Tanner Sharp is going to go by. Looks like Tanner's going to retake the lead. Paul Ross right behind him, but Nate's going to be right in the thick of things. It would appear. But, but, uh, Tanner and Paul do have fresher tires. Yeah, they both took four. Nate's on two. So we'll have to see I how that strategy I, works out. I believe out. I heard that Corey Lindsay's coming. Maybe coming in this time by, but I'm not sure. Corey Lindsay He's is slowing coming down. in this time by. He was the leader. This now puts Tanner Sharp to the point. I'm assuming Corey's just going to take four. But we'll have to see here. Let's take the pit lane view as he comes into his pit stall. As you get a nice view of the cars coming by as well. Right sides go up. We'll have to see if the left side is coming up. As now they're Paul going to. is right behind the three car. But it looks like the three car does get a great run on this corner. This would basically be the best battle on track right now. Half a car like and half a truck length separating them. Looks like the 18 gets a huge run entering the corner, but Tanner manages to pull off on the exit. Tanner's going to block him just a little bit. Looked like the 18 was trying to get to that high side. And ever Very so close to the wall, the 18 got. To As oh! Paul almost loses it. Paul, what a save. Wow. Both trucks hit the apron, but Paul got the worst end of it. Now, he didn't lose that much time. To, Tre or, uh, to Tanner. So let's see if he can make that up. What a save, though, by the 18 of Paul Ross. That was a fantastic save. I thought it was over. And the fact, or, and what amazes me the most is that he didn't lose that much time to Tanner. Only a half second back. Uh, it's better to lose half a second than to lose a whole quarter. I'll be honest, I think he's already reeling him back in. All we know is that Tanner entered that corner about 10 miles an hour faster than, uh, sorry, 10 kilometers are faster than Paul. He actually lost a, a tenth to Tanner that time by. I think once Tanner, because we know how his tires don't like the bottom line and the uh, closing stages of a run. And there's your top three, all in one camera shot. Paul Basically, is really great at saving tires, though, so... If, if Tanner can outrun him, we'll see how long he can run him before, uh, Paul <coughs> pardon me, before Paul manages to catch up to him. I really think, though, Paul's going to close. Well, no, he actually lost two, two tenths there. So, and now Nate's closing back in on him, unless he's saving something, which I don't think he is. Let's go on board here with Paul. Let's uh, 
Let's raise up that volume to 11. Now Nate Lacomany all over the back bumper of that 18. Johnny Thomas just went down Bay Road. Looks like Nate's probably going to have the better run coming off too. Now the question is, will that lap car in front of Tanner play a factor? I don't believe so. I believe that was the 43 of Samuel Close ahead of Tanner there. Actually teammates. And they are teammates. You wouldn't know that by the truck, however. Now, Nate has gotten by Paul, and we'll see if Nate can catch up to Tanner, which by he's the got, last I've been showing, he could. He's got 11 laps to do so. Now, the question is, will Nate wear his tires, or will Tanner wear his tires? And yes, there was the 43 of Samuel close ahead of him. And if Nate keeps up this pace, yeah, he gained two or three tenths on Tanner that time. Nate is currently flying around this racetrack. It's 10 laps to go. 10 like laps to set your chances for this race. He is closing right now, I'm telling you. He's going to be all over the back bumper of that three. Come about five laps to go. Probably less. Probably eight. It's probably next or, time. Yeah, back. try nine. Here he comes. Now, how deep will Tanner block? Because he is there. Tanner's been trying the defensive line whenever people get around him. Nate's going to try the high side. He's actually going to dime in the corner. How well of a run is he going to get off the corner, though? He's going to take the high side. Tanner's going to give it all to him. He might try to uh, block him in with the lap car. I don't think Nate's too good on the high side. Well, I say that, and here he comes. Oh, He's no. got the better run. Oh. Ever so close, those trucks came. Gonna the Nate's going to take the lead with just eight go. laps remaining. Wow. Tanner goes back down on the inside, but I don't think it's going to be enough. We knew he would. Oh, oh. There oh, a little bit of smoke there. Oh, Nate's going to hit the wall, and Tanner is barely going to hold on. I do believe Tanner did get the wall, though. And there was contact. That's what we call close quarter uh, training paint racing. And now he's got to deal with the or the 43 ahead of him. Ahead of him. But there may be some. I don't think. I don't think Sam would uh, try and intentionally slow up the 08. And I just noticed Sam has some damage to that right side quarter panel. Uh, right front. Oh yes, yeah, yes he does. None of them have really but caught though, and he's gonna pull out of the way. And now, really, the battle is behind them with the 3 and the 18. I, I don't know how they, they managed to uh, have Nate go by him because they all got four fresh tires and Nate got uh, two tires. That really amazes me, too. Yeah. He got two tires that, la or that last time. Either he saved them perfectly or he just put on the afterburners. Either that, actually, or he tires. kicked... Yeah, either that or he kicked Rudolph into high gear. I don't know if he kicked Rudolph into high gear or more like Rudolph uh, turned on his nose. So the best battle on track right now is second between the three of Tanner Sharp and the 18 of Paul Ross. With five laps to go, the 08 is basically checked out. Now let's hope he doesn't pull a Ryan Newman and uh, somehow oh, lose this. Oh, there's 18 in the inside! Paul's going to duck down, entering three. Is he going to clear him off a of four? And it would appear that he will. No, he won't. Tanner gets a better run off the corner. I believe they touched. No, he didn't touch. It was close, though. 18 goes back up, but the three is still determined to get this position back. 
Paul's gonna claim second now. I don't think he has anything for the 08, however. Paul got there really high. He scrapes the wall. Whoa, whoa. Paul into the wall. Three's gonna look I under again. One second. And right now they currently have a 1.5, or Nate has a 1.5 second advantage coming to three laps to go. They don't know how to quit. They don't. This is, these, these, two, don't give up. these two have been the most aggressive trucks on the track all night. Let's just hope they can finish them off clean. They've been clean so far, so why should it change now? The only, real, the only huge real hiccup was when the 18 clipped the apron and it almost spun out. And they, that may have actually hurt his tires. That may have been why he was slowing up so much. Eighteen is trying everything he can as they take two laps to go. Tanner is saying he just cannot get to that bottom. And that may be, again, that's a disadvantage for him as the 18 is the strongest on that bottom. I don't know. This last time by, he matched it to the bottom pretty well. 87 actually but looking we, underneath yeah. the 18. I think a lap car I, may uh, interfere here. I believe he's got tires. Well, we're going to go on board with the 08 now, now as he takes the white flag. What a run for the 08. Took two tires on that last pit stop and somehow just blew away both the 3 and the 18. Possibly the most dominant drivers tonight. Looking back with the 3 and the 18, it seems to have cooled things off a bit. There's like about 3 or 4 car lengths between them. 08, rounding turn 4. Nate Lacomney, he's going to win the Christmas battle and the race. Nate Lacomney wins. All right, congratulations. Son. Well deserved. Tanner Sharp's going to come home second. Paul Ross going to finish third. And what a race between those two. Not sure what's happening there with Johnny Thomas and Paul, but you're a winner tonight. The 08 of Nate Lacomney, and again, won that Christmas bet for the best Christmas truck yeah. out here tonight. I, I, his, I called him with the best with the best looking truck. And his boss behind him, going to give him a little tap there. That's Johnny Thomas in the 80. All right, Nate. so finishing round of results is Nate Lacomey, Tanner Sharp, Paul Ross, Nick Miller, Trevin Roby, Corey Lindsay, Samuel Close, Richard Lafferty, Nathan Young, and Michael Skinner. Johnny Thomas, Richard Hintz, David Everly, Jess Story, Pierce Martin, and Stephen Ketman. 16 trucks on track tonight. And as Nate's going to do his burnouts, we're going to take a minute, and uh, you won't miss a thing. Again, we're going to go side by side. You're watching Sim Racing Live.
and welcome back to Sim Racing Live's coverage of the three wide racing racing to care truck series. Uh, your winner was Nate Lacomney, however, he was not in our team speak server tonight, so we're going to talk to tonight's second place fin finisher, Tanner. Uh, that was an incredible race between you and the 18 of Paul Ross. That was probably the best racing I've seen on iRacing yet. Talk us through that. Yeah, I, I've been racing with Paul for quite a few years now since uh, we, the league came to iRacing, and I've been racing with him on console, so I trust him enough, you know, that we're going to race clean. So, And I just put enough trust in him we race clean. It was, it, was, it was a great battle. It was really hard to pass. Uh, tires were wearing. That was causing the cars to get tight, and we had a hard time... We, we were struggling to keep the cars on the bottom of the racetrack because it just seemed the fastest way around the track. But, uh, yeah, the Moan, two, the Moan 2 truck ran real good tonight. Um, I don't know if anybody had anything for Nate. Uh, it, almost, it almost looked like he had super grip out there. But, uh, yeah, we tried to short pit a little bit to gain the advantage, and we had the advantage. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, he caught us, and he was the better man. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, he had a lot of grip. He took two tires that last time, and he still managed to go around both of you guys. Although, got to congratulate both you and um, Paul. You guys ran a hell of a race. That was the more excitement in, in any of your laps combined than anybody else's. Yeah, it just proves that of how much talent there is in this league and that we know we can race, uh, that we trust each other and we can race clean against each other on the racetrack. So Paul's a great racer. I mean, he's one of the best. He, he is probably maybe the best in this league when it comes to clean race, and I trust him on the racetrack. So I know whenever I'm around on, on any track, I can race clean with him and have good good battles with him. Now, there were a few issues while you were trying to block the 08 of Nate. Uh, the last few laps uh, blocking for him. Uh, looks like you guys made some contact at least probably twice. Can you explain that? Um, I only remember making contact once, but I didn't even get a zero X out of it. <laughs> I didn't even get any notification. I heard it, but uh, yeah, I I don't know. I was on the bottom of the racetrack, and as I said before, the tires were wearing, and it was causing the car to get the truck to get real tight. So I tried to keep it on the bottom as long as possible, and I just drifted up the track just a little bit on them. So uh, sorry about the contact, but uh, I didn't recommend you won the race. So uh, no, yeah. I, I did my best to hold hold them off and uh, try to win the race, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Yeah, well, we thought it would have been you, considering how uh, how uh, uh, pitch strategy were going. But uh, Justin, you have anything else for Tanner? Nope. Uh, congrats, man. And uh, like he said, that was a heck of a battle between you and the 18. So congrats on the second, and uh, we'll see you at Martinsville, man. Yeah, before I exit the broadcast booth, I'd like to thank Racing Tequila for sponsoring the series. Uh, it's a great sponsor. I love them. And uh, Mountain Dew, uh, Sharp Motorsports, 3 Wide Racing, uh, Harpoon Designs, uh, thank you for your support, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Actually, tomorrow night. Yep. All right. Thanks, All right. Man. So we're going to bring in our fifth place finisher now, Trevin Roby. Uh, Trevin, uh, just try and talk us through your night here. It was uh, quite eventful. Yeah, so it seemed like a very interesting and fun race. Yeah, for me, it just I had a I had a good truck on the short run for kind of like Richmond last week with the B cars. I was, I was fast for about 10, 15 laps and could stay with people. But after that, I just couldn't go anywhere. Like, I know on the final uh, pit stops there, Nick in front of me, he took two tires. And even after that, I still couldn't catch him on the late run. All right. It seemed like you uh, you, you, you definitely had uh, some fun moments. Uh, I think at one point you may have almost made some contact with the wall. But other than that, you kept yourself with a very clean truck. And you came home with a top five finish. Congratulations to you. Any uh, words you want to give out to your sponsors? Um, well, I know when it comes to the wall, I didn't hit it. I know I kept the clean truck. I didn't hit it until about five to go, <laughs> but I did end up hitting it. But yeah, um, you know, just some sponsors this week have been, uh, you and Google. That's what I have on the truck now. Uh, no, um, that was mainly cause yeah, but yeah, we had a clean truck for most of it. You know, didn't get into any incidents. Um, I was just kind of surprised at how bad I was on the late run or late in the run this week. It did definitely surprised me. Well, we hope you got enough experience for tomorrow's race and that you can share it with your buddy who will get with you on Skype later. So congratulations, you finished. Justin, do you have any words for you? No, uh, there were, yeah, there was one point during the race where we were with you and then you had to lift off. So uh, obviously, I guess the track got tighter on you as the run went on. Yeah, maybe one of these weeks we'll get a loose setup. <laughs> All right, well, congrats on the top five, man, and uh, we'll see you at Martinsville. Yep. 
So now we're going to bring in our 10th place finisher, Michael Skinner. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't win the Christmas battle, but um, you also didn't have too good of a race. What happened there, man? You know, I don't I don't know what it was. Um, the truck was actually really, really fast. Um, I know before that pit stop, I was the fastest car by you know, at least two, ten two tenths even over the eventual winner. And after that pit stop, you know, we were just rolling along. And I don't know if it's when I got, when I crossed over the line going, you know, going behind the lap car, if it just got tight or if I just didn't hit, you know, the right, well, the line just perfect, but it just went straight in the wall. And there was just, there was just nothing I could, I could do, unfortunately. Um, lucky to salvage a 10th, to be honest with you. You know, I'm a little frustrated with myself, uh, but I guess you could take it as a learning lesson for tomorrow and not be so dumb. All right. I hope that wasn't a phone because, you know, we're not we're not allowed to have phones when we're driving our cars. So uh, you, it seems like you and uh, Trillips, as well as well, somebody else, I can't remember their name, had a great battle in the middle of the run. And uh, it seems like you kept on dominating and, and passing through to them, even though you uh, seem to lose some time on pit stops. But uh, you got yourself a nice, clean race car. And uh, even though you didn't win the Christmas bet, you won in our hearts. That was a nice looking car. Yeah, we're going to have a uh, rolling out a Star Wars car for tomorrow night, so maybe we can put one of these, you know, special paint schemes in victory lane. I sure mm, hope so, yeah, man. Yeah. Although I have a feeling Rooster Thief, Rooster Thief might be in victory lane tomorrow. Yeah, Roosters do have nice teeth. Well, yeah, I still yeah. think right. that your Christmas car was the best tonight, but uh, top 10, not too much to complain about. I believe you're still leading in points, so uh, some things to look forward to come these next couple races. Yeah, definitely closed up a little bit, but uh, we just got to stay focused and get this uh, Shake and Bake Motorsports team a, a trophy at the end of the year, and that's what really matters, not so much about wins. I uh, just got to start racing smarter and, and use my head a little bit. I got a little ahead of myself, and and I paid the price for it. So we'll go on to whatever track's next and try to avoid Talladega. All right, man. Well, we'll see you at Martinsville. Oh, good. That'll be fun. All right, All so right, now so... we have David Everly in the uh, in the booth. You had a couple times tonight where you got extremely loose. We knew one occasion about halfway through the race. Uh, just try and talk us through your entire race there. Uh, I was just using the race as a learning experience with my uh, second race in the league. Um, still kind of new to eye racing. I just come into the turn, and it seemed like the uh, rear end just wanted to slide out. I was lucky enough to save it and able to get into pit row. It just uh, was a learning experience for me. Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I, th I think Carlos may be having some technical issues here. I apologize. I'm sorry. Everybody just cut off for me. Well, Go on, please. Don't let me stop you. I believe he was done. But, uh, again, that was an incredible save. Um I'm sure that wasn't the finish you were hoping for, but as you said, it was a good learning experience. As you, this was your second race. Uh, anything in particular you learned about this truck? Uh, I got, definitely got to do more practice. Um, I did turn a lot of laps practice in here. It just wasn't the same. I mean, I was uh, in practice. I was running, you know, mid thirties, uh, thirty point fours. Um, just definitely a different learning experience. But I definitely got to be able to turn more laps in these tracks and. Just learn to truck a little bit more. All right. Well, good luck on your uh, future races here in Three Wide Racing, and uh, we wish you the best, man. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to close out our broadcast here now. Uh, Carlos, is there anything more you want to say here? Um, no, the only real thing I want to say is thank you to our sponsors uh, that we have in our trucks, as well as our sponsors of uh, CounterStrikeGoVaults.com. At iRacing, uh, I forgot, uh, IR, IRTBO, is that what we use? <laughs> yes, it wasn't sir. working quite well today, but uh, I think we still like been, to thank them. I think that may have been more of an iRacing issue, but other than mm, that, yes. A good thank success. You to, Go ahead. Thank you to Three Wide Racing and the wonderful track of Chicagoland for helping us broadcast. It was a good successful stream. We're going to uh, be missing probably the next two races here, but we're going to pick it up at Martinsville, and uh, we're going to close out the season from there. So for Carlos Acosta, I'm Justin Kolb. Thank you for joining us here on Sim Racing Live. We'll catch you next or, uh, in about two weeks in Martinsville.
All right, I'm from Justin Kolb. I'm Carlos Acosta. You guys have a nice